Oh yes, Wave 3 Arena, widely considered to be one of the greatest arena shooters of all time. Its face paced action and smooth responsive control set a new standard of the genre and inspired a generation of players and developers. The game's popularity also spawned several obstacles that kept that Quake 3 core, like Quake Live and Quake Champions. As such, Quake 3 Arena stands as the pinnacles of the series. Given its endless legacy and the advancement in technology in its release, it is time for the game to be brought to the Unity engine. Let's check how it was done and all the problems involved. The first things that you notice when you compare both coordinate systems is that Unity is a left-handed coordinate system with the Y up and Quake 3 is a right-handed coordinate system with the Z up. The problem is that if we align both coordinate systems to the same origin, we realize that the Quake coordinate system is really an odd one. The conversion is really easy done for the virtual three points, but the problem will be on rotation because as you can see, there's no way we can rotate the Quake coordinate system to get the Unity coordinate system, and that will represent the problem that we will check in the future. Let's talk about the different surface type the Quake 3 has and we match rendering unit. The first type we are gonna found is the planar surface. Basically, it's just triangle planar polygons. The second type is the patch surface. Basically, they are basic surface, basic match. We're not going to discuss that in further because they're complicated. And the third part is triangle soup or our models, as you can see right here. Let's talk about the rendering. Every surface of the map is able to be rendered by texture map. However, as you can see, it looks very boring. Also, it has the ability uh, to have better color surface, and as you can see, it now looks much better. But also, if we combine everything, as Quake 3 allows for light map surface, as you can see, the texture map and vertex color and light map gives the original Quake 3 look. And also, if we allow to have the shader surface, as you can see here, this is the real Quake 3 look. Let's check how Quake 3 handles the rendering. The first thing it does is to search through the nodes of the basic tree to get the our current leaf. After we found our current leaf, it loops through all the leaves in the maps. As we got our position visible set, we know what leaves are visible and what leaves are not. In, in this case, as we are using it in Unity, what we do is we mask them so they are visible to the camera. Okay, let's check that in action. As you can see, on the top part, we are hiding everything on those clusters and invisible. As we are moving it, the, the clusters start appearing and the cluster that we were before, as we have the red armor, you will see that it disappears because it's no longer visible. So we are making a complete rotation around the map. We are checking everything. So to check how the tension possible check works. As you can see we are approaching the area we were before and the area start appearing, the customs start appearing. Then we are approaching as the where the red armor was and that area start again to disappear. Basically that's how our we handle the uh, occlusion killing in Unity uh, as something that was done in Quake 3. Quick 3 collision detection is done with brushes. Brushes are basically convex surfaces that are defined by planes. The collision detection is simply done taking a ray from the camera. In this case, as it's a 3D brush, it checks the intersection every, against every face of the brush. Doing this in Unity is a big no-no, as in Unity we have collided, so there's no need to take rays getting back to the base of 3. However, we're going to use the brushes but in a completely different way. So, as we are still using the brushes, the brushes are defined by the planes. We know that the brushes are convex, so if we get the vertex of that intersection of all the planes, as you can see over there, then we use a convex spool to get a convex surface. We use the Benet-Billion algorithm, as was based on the Gregorius 
from bulk operator no? on his PDF implementing QuickFlow. For the Brazier surface, we use a Brazier colliders. Basically, we use an approximation that's one fold of the Brazier surface and is an implementation for a small part of the Brazier curve. And that's how we get the colliders, the shaders. We three shaders were easily implemented the shader graph. As you can see here, that beautiful environmental shade that has the, the ammunition box as well as the armor is implemented really really easy and that is that awesome look as you can see is implemented here on the health bar and it's really beautiful another channel we used to make it and translate in way 3 is this channel that was implemented not only for the rain gun but also for the plasma so quick shader are really easy to translate directly into shader graph. As I mentioned earlier, one of the biggest problems was the rotations of the player model. Because we cannot change directly the coordinate system and make quaternary rotation. The good thing is that for the player model rotations, quick 3 gives a matrix 3x3. Three by three. So, if we use that matrix and expand it, we get a rotation matrix that we can use in Unity. And as you can see below, we use this equation, basically, and we get our matrix T, we can apply it and inverse, and then we can get our rotation matrix in our new coordinate system, in this case, the Unity system. And this is the result. And that's it for now. If you're interested in following our project, please check the link in the description. Thanks again for watching.